A couple days ago, I did an uneducated review of Genesis and MetaZoo with the plan that that night I was going to try both games. Well, I did that, and now I want to share some of my thoughts. But I really want to do both of these justice. It turns out I have a lot to say about both, especially as I kind of sat down and thought about my experiences afterward. So I'm going to treat these as separate videos. So you're going to get basically two at the same time. If you wanted to see Genesis or MetaZoo, Meta kind of depends on which, which video you're watching. If this isn't it, uh, you know, check out the other one. Look at the YouTube title. There you go. Also, I'm doing this disclaimer this way, so I only have to crack one beer. The beer for the day. I must break you, the white Russian Imperial Stout from Verboten. Um, I'm excited. I love these guys. I'm so excited that uh, Stout season's coming back. Uh, for the brewery, uh, my friends over at Redleg, who uh, Redleg Brewery in Colorado Springs, uh, check that cool artillery cover. Uh, Veteran-owned, veteran-operated uh, down there by the Air Force Academy. And man, I went over there over the weekends. That's kind of why I didn't do this video earlier. Um, oh, oh, guys, I am so impressed. So impressed by the guy, by the, uh, by the team down there. Fantastic spot. Also, looking over the Garden of the Gods, there's a rooftop. Like, I want to play Flesh and Blood and, and other card games there. I really do. Um, I'm excited. Oh, man, this might not be... Nope, I don't think I've got enough... Do I have enough space? Barely! Barely! <laughs> Barely. Good. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get cracking. Let's talk about Genesis. So, kind of a dude basher sort of game, but a very interesting element to this card game. It's played on a grid. It's not actually played, like, on a blank table thing so you have a grid if you can see that um that you put cards on and then you kind of tactically move cards around which is a really interesting uh mechanic i dug that uh it's also for i think two to six players from my understanding you can do the multiplayer variant for any of these for this and both meta zoo they're also that one's also two to six i don't give two shits about three plus um if i want to look at the card game and the the competitive aspect and, and how well it goes you, you, it's two people that's what you got um, so I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on how that plays out uh, and how the two person, uh, two person version of the game plays out as with all things, I've never really tried a review before guys. So, uh, this, these are my opinions based off of how I play games, how I see games. Please don't think this is some sort of universal rule. Please by all means, share your other thoughts and things you like or things you don't like and go for it. I am a janky player that, that likes fast paced stuff. That's what I do. That's what I do. So anyway, let me show off MetaZoo really, or God bless it. Let me show off Genesis. I've done this take like three times and I keep saying MetaZoo. Don't worry, it's coming. But I swear, if I say Genesis on this video, I'm going to lose my mind. Anyway, I'm going to show off Genesis really quick and then I'm going to share some of my thoughts. So here's my very quick dumbed down explanation of the game. Genesis is play I almost said MetaZoo. Genesis is played on a grid, a five by six. So you've got five squares that are going across. You're gonna have six going uh going tall. This is only half the grid. Player two will have the other side of this grid. Um in this, you have characters. You've got your heroes as well as they can bring on various summons, and you guys are fighting across the board to uh to basically get into position so you can beat the daylights out of each other. So you're actually making moves, and there's a lot of tactical elements to this. Um, very chess-like, and I dig that. When it comes to the heroes themselves, I'm going to try to zoom in on this. Hopefully you can see this. Um, so each hero has kind of different affiliations. This is uh, how you know which cards you can, associate, you, you can also add into the deck. So I've got this affiliation here. I've got this. That means that I can use this card in Fang. Um, additionally, they've got a life total. Uh, if you can see that, they have this starting aura. I'll talk about that, as well as this really interesting fire energy mechanic. This is actually an energy reduction mechanic. Um, additionally, I can also see where they can attack using these little, this little grid up at the top. So as I mentioned, we're moving around the board. This shows that I need to be facing the direction, and she can use her attacks, this fire, shield, fire attack here, um, one space in front of her. So I need to get one space in front of her if I want to attack like an earth elemental and then I'm hitting for whatever the damage is. Um, neat. I dig that. Naturally, rangers have more stuff and I'm a ranger girl for anybody who knows my flesh and blood stuff uh, all about the rangers. Anyway, um, 
So we have attacks as well. Each hero has a series of attacks. There's a payment method here. So exert is basically fatigue, tap, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, and then, yeah, the, you, you build a deck based off of, you build a 50 card, no more, no less deck out of the, um, out of these affiliations. And then you play with the cards themselves. They've got their affiliations. They also have this chi value up here. So every deck can only have 250 total chi. Basically, so you can't just stack the deck with the absolute best cards in the game. Uh, you've got to make a couple sacrifices. Um, but these are also things that sit there and play on the field. And, uh, you know, you, you, they do whatever they say. Um, so that's that's basically how the game works. You just play until you, you, you know, beat the crap out of each other. So that's, uh, I wanted to show that off. I'm going to switch the camera and just kind of show uh, some of the other unique elements uh, of this game. So a couple things I really like about the game. The tactical aspect of this, the grid side of things, actually works. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's really fun to not just look at your board state versus my board state, but now it's your board position versus my board position. It's very chess-like in that, and I, I dig that. I dig the idea of having to figure out what my deck is based on kind of how far back do I want to be, how, you know, what's the distance, what do I want to do with the, uh, with the map. There are some cool things where I can actually, I don't know if I have any... Um, quick and dirty ones to, uh, to find and throw down. Um, probably not on short notice, but you can lay traps on certain squares. And if somebody moves into the square, then, uh, something bad happens to them. And I like being able to kind of set up the board and it's like, you're going to do my dance. Uh, and I dug that one of the flags that I actually had is that, uh, you know, I was worried that this was just too serious, too straightforward, that there wasn't any room for jank, uh, and silliness. And looking at the trap cards, I feel like there could be. Um, I, it was really funny. We had somebody threw pits right in front of me and I was like, you suck for doing that. And then it turns out I was able to throw all of his dudes into the pits and kill them because that's just how it worked. And I was like, okay, that was actually pretty fun. That was pretty neat. So there's some, there's some really neat, very interesting mechanics with this. Um, and it is, it is, it was really fun to kind of figure out, but don't, don't think too hard about that. Cause this is, this is not going to get, this is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, I do like... Also, that everything everything actually matters in this game. Your health can be a cost. The number of cards in your deck can be a cost. I mentioned the fire thing, the little fire aspect. Uh, that's your energy. Uh, there are cards that you have to expend energy, which is literally cards off the top of your deck. Um, and then this two that Feng has, that maybe or maybe not, you can see, um, means that everything that has this is reduced by two. That's a big benefit um, in a 50 card, you know, for a 50 card deck. So I like that. I also really like that you start with all of your resources at the beginning. This is the opposite of like your magics and your Pokemons and all of that, where you are slowly building up to your resources. You actually start with every resource that you could have and you whittle away and you get beaten down. It's like flesh and blood. You come in at your strongest and you leave battered and bruised. That one's also pretty cool. You know, you, you time yourself out and, and really get yourself set up for success. I like that. I'm a big fan uh, of that. There, there's a lot good to kind of like about Genesis um, just that way. Where I have some struggles, though, is in the execution. So I'm going to grab a sip of beer, and we're going to talk about that. So I have to preface this, and I'm going to say the same thing about MetaZoo, is that the, the, the two-player starter set that I have is, is called Beta, and it's called Beta for a reason. Uh, and even Assad, who he let me know, was like, this was a little bit rough and kind of unbalanced. And it was a little bit rough and kind of unbalanced. However, as much as I kind of appreciate the core mechanics, looking through even future sets, there are a few things I'm a little bit... I'm not going to say worried about. Um, it's his game and other people are going to like it. But stuff that just didn't really work very well for me. Um, one of the things that I think is going to be figured out over the next couple of sets, next couple of years, is the value of the things on the board and the things on the card. Uh, I don't know if Genesis is there just yet. The staying power of the summons. Because you can have summons and they use a substantial amount of your deck and then they die in a turn. Um, because that's just kind of what happens. So I spend a whole lot to die in a turn. Cute. Um, so things like, can it survive an attack or two? I don't feel like the balance is really there on just how important stuff like that is. Um, I, there are some cards that you pay your life for it. I don't know if you, know, I treat them as like a percentage of your losing condition, uh, that I have to pay for it. And did I get the cost 
out of that. And in many cases, and I mean many, many cases, uh, we didn't. Eventually, my buddy Jeremy and I, we just kind of learned that like playing summons on the field wasn't really a win condition more than it was a stall tactic. Because it's like, all right, I spent... This cost 13 aura for a hero that maybe had 90. So I spent a sixth of my resources to put something down and it lasted one turn. And maybe I got a pot shut off. Maybe I used a sixth of my resources to do three damage or about 10% uh, of the win condition. And that just didn't pay off. That just was more trouble than it was worth. So they came up as, as just like delay and stall and it wasn't really that interesting to play the summons, but because they exist, we had to. And that kind of sucked. So these just, ah, it was it was too much cost for not enough value. And there's actually a lot of cards where there was too much cost for not enough value. That being said, there were also some that was very that we didn't think were going to be good, like prevent one damage. That prevent one damage is the difference between something staying on the field and not staying on the field. And staying power, like I mentioned, has a heck of a lot more weight than I think the beta version really showed off. And I don't know if they fix that in other sets. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit of a struggle. Things attacking for one, two, or three. Things attacking at a distance. All of these stuff seem like they were on much more equal footing than they should be. Uh, and I don't know if that's a great thing. It definitely made some of our games a little bit boring. It definitely made us have a lot of tempo problems. Um, tempo in this game, at least in this beta version, is a big... It sucked. It really sucked. If you find yourself slapping down three summons and the opponent only has one, your opponent's dead unless you're drawing cards. Uh, unless he draws into the cards. And unfortunately, this is one of those games that just hasn't learned that drawing one card a turn fucking sucks. There are reasons that games try to get away from drawing one card a turn. There are reasons that Magic immediately started throwing in draw and tutors. It's because drawing one card a turn freaking blows, especially at the end of the game when you're, you, you've expended all your aura and you're still drawing like your, your spells and things that use it. It's like, good, this is a dead turn where I get to sit here and watch myself die. Um, I wish that this was like draw two at the beginning. Draw two, discard one for all I care about. Like, let's have some more tricks up my sleeve as the battle goes on, outside of the one thing that I can think of from a lore perspective. Um, it, it created a lot of issues where we would play the game, and then there would be a significant advantage, and then it was like, did you draw correctly? You didn't, so I'm just going to continue to win. And by the time we got to it, it was like 14 to 4, and it didn't matter what he did at that point. So there was a little bit of a snowball effect. There were definitely dead Dead spots in the game where we both just went back and licked our wounds and and then sat there and just waited until somebody got a good draw and then off they go and charge um that was a big struggle um for something that's supposed to be so fast paced um and so tactical running into a corner and sitting there and staring at each other for a couple turns so you can actually do something uh happened way more often than it should have and it really didn't make the game a heck of a lot of fun um, but again, I haven't really seen too many of the new cards, so maybe that's something that's gone. Maybe that's something that's been fixed up. Maybe, maybe these summons, these earth elementals and these, these hunting hounds and, and all these different things, maybe there are creatures that can stick around that can not be as useless as I put it on the, I put it on the table and deflected an attack towards you. Towards or instead of deflecting it at you, it deflected towards the creature that you just sent down. Because at that point, it's just a numbers game. If we both set down creatures that attack each other, the person who wins is the one who is less reliant on the resource used to pay for that creature. And for something like this, that should not be a win condition. And it kind of was. I just had to wait out the magician. You're out of aura. I guess we're done. How do I prevent all that? I'm going to keep everything in my hand that, that dodges your big stuff, and I'm just going to sit here and wait for you to whittle yourself down and wear yourself out, and then I'm going to win. That wasn't very fun. That wasn't a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, 
I have some execution problems. Given that, though, given that it's still very much a balance where life and number of cards in the deck and staying power and number of attack and distance, these are these are much more, there are a lot more of these things to consider in this game than there are in other games, so it's going to take a little bit of time for them to figure out. With that, I wouldn't be shocked if in the next two years, after we get a couple more sets under our belt, that alpha, beta, ma beta, maybe even the first set, maybe not the first set, but maybe alpha and beta, just, you just drop those. You just say, all right, that's, we're rotating that out. I know rotations are a little bit of a spicy thing, um, but this game definitely seems it, it's still figuring itself out as it moves on. Um, I think the core mechanics are there. I think they're I think they're good. I think there's a lot good there. Just the value of things and the tempo th stuff. Just mm, I just I never like drawing dead cards. That's it. Having dead cards sucks the likelihood of dead cards sucks and then if you're drawing one turn in a tactical game where six things can happen to your one drawing dead cards sucks and you sit there and you stare at it and you just let yourself die yeah man damn it so but there's clay he's close He's close. He's definitely been listening to feedback. He is such a joy to talk to. Assad is is a, a true champion of just meeting people and, and doing, you know, just, just being great. Being absolutely great. Um, and he really gets behind the game. Um, I think that there's promise here. I think that there's things that can make this a lot of fun. One of the other flags that I had um, that I just do want to go over really quick was, uh, actually there were two. One was how, how complicated can the stacks get? Um, there are swift actions, as I mentioned. Um, and they could just stack on top of each other. They weren't as bad as I thought they would be, so I can't really bitch about that. The, that this, the having nine cards in a stack, that was just kind of, that's just what happened. However, on that note, we gotta go back to tempo because I have cards that defend one damage and then that's a card out of my hand, a precious card out of my hand, and then I'm spending three turns doing nothing. Ugh, oh, ugh, oh, God bless it. It was, mm, mm. I hate that. I hate it so much. Um, the other thing is, can't just can I just pick this up and go? That was another thing I brought up. Does this look like a game because of this? And I didn't know how much else there was. There's not really much else, really. Like, I don't even need this if I can use my imagination. Maybe I go to a bar and I get some, like, equal packs and sweet and low and make a grid that way. I don't think it's, I don't think it's as miserable. Um, I could probably take this and just kind of go anywhere. That's fine. They actually gave you and give you, the like, the aura cards. Uh, for the resources, which was actually pretty cool, but these were actually a little bit more cumbersome than I thought. I would, I would, I don't know how I'd handle that, honestly. Just maybe not, I don't know, maybe not cards, unless there's a reason to have these as aura. Um, I would love to not see these, because it just, we just said, screw it, we're using a calculator. Call it good. Um, but yeah. That's where I'm at with Genesis. I think there's a lot of potential. I think there's a lot of cool things happening. It makes it for a very interesting game. I just don't know if if where they're at, or at least where they were at with this beta, they really have a grasp on what they've got and how much things are worth. And it just took away from the fun a lot more than I wanted it to. However, if they can get those things resolved, um, and if they can really do some things that are more unique than different ways to do one, two, or three damage, um, I think you've got yourself a stellar game. I would love to see more traps. I would love to see the grid manipulation be a true force and a true presence. Um, and right now it's just, you do a dude, and now here's a dude, and here's a dude, and they, the dudes meet in the middle and they beat each other up. Okay, you might as well just cut the back two rows from this and have Yu-Gi-Oh! and beat the crap out of each other. Um, like, that's fine. Um, I would love to see some board manipulation. I would love to see some kind of goofier tactics, um, that are a little bit different than I hit you with a thing, and then you hit me with a thing, and then something dies. Um, there's room for it in here. There is room for it, and that's pretty cool. I also didn't get a chance to see any kind of combo things of, is there any value of trying to protect your creatures on the board because maybe some of them work together? Um, I would love to see that also. I think that would be pretty slick as opposed to three different entities on the board fighting three other different entities on the board that don't know how to talk to each other except one, they're, they, they have the same element. Neat. Um, I'd love to see some cool partnership stuff. Don't go as crazy as fucking Yu-Gi-Oh does with like the XYZs and stuff like that. But like, hey, through the deck, if you're able to get both on the board, they get some substantial benefit. And now, you know, now the sisters are a problem to deal with. I think it'd be kind of cool. I think it makes for, again, that kind of casual janky deck. Um, 
Overall, game as promised. I do want to learn more. I do want to play more. I do want to see some of the future sets. Um, I'm, uh, I, I, I like where it's headed. I just, man, this beta set was not the best, uh, not the best showing. So, but that's what I have for you. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, any questions, anything, if you have played the future sets and you're like, there are some things that were fixed up. There are some maybe new rules. Let me know. I would love to see it. I would love to see this game succeed, not just because it is so unique and interesting, but also Assad is such a wonderful human being and he deserves all the success in the world. Uh, and I hope he and his wife had a spectacular fifth year, uh, five year anniversary, uh, over the weekend. That's right. See, we talked, um, it's great. But he also said to be uh, unapologetic here. So that's what I got for you this time. If you want to see the MetaRazoo review, feel free to check out that other video. Cheers, mates.